Okay, so the Pope, Snoop Dogg, and a penguin with a glandular disorder walk into a bar. A bartender looks at him, and after a second he says, Oh, what the hell is this supposed to be? Some kind of joke? Pause for the drums, thank you. That's one of the worst jokes I know, folks, and you might have chuckled anyway, because people love laughing. It's true, the average person laughs about 17 times a day, but what is laughter? How does it work? And is it really good for you? The study of laughter, which is a real thing people do for a living, has its own name, gelatology. These gelatologists have learned that the production of laughter is involved with multiple regions of the brain. Emotional responses are the function of the brain's largest region, the frontal lobe. Uh, in this one study, subjects were hooked up to an EEG and their brain activity was measured when they laughed. Their brains produced a regular electrical pattern. Researchers observed the following stuff. The left side of the cortex analyzed the words and structure of the joke. The large frontal lobe, which is involved in social emotional reactions, became very active. The right hemisphere carried out the analysis required to get the joke. Brainwave activity then spread to the sensory processing area of the occipital lobe. And laughter seemed to be produced via a circuit that runs through many regions of the brain. And here, the limbic system seems crucial. This system controls some of those behaviors that are essential to the life of all mammals. The amygdala and the hippocampus seem to be the main areas involved with emotions. So there's lots of stuff going on there, right? Lots of brain stuff? Never mind, I shouldn't have done it. So where does laughter come from, right? The first human laughter, it turns out, may have begun as a gesture of shared relief at the passing of danger. Ho oh, ho, that mammoth totally almost killed us, or something, I don't know. Since the relaxation that results from a bout of laughter inhibits the fight or flight response, laughter might indicate trust in one's companions. That's kind of sweet. Many researchers believe that the purpose of cracking up is related to making and strengthening human connections. So laughter, like a lot of other human behaviors, may have evolved to change the behavior of others. It might be a social signal, sort of like a bird song. Now as for those health benefits, they're real. Laughter provides a safety valve that shuts off the flow of stress hormones and that whole fight or flight compound that swings into action when we experience anger or hostility. And when we're laughing, cells that destroy tumors and viruses increase, as do gamma interferons, T cells, which are a major part of the immune response, and B cells, which make antibodies, which despite their name are a really good thing to have. Researchers estimate that laughing, get this, 100 times, is equal to 10 minutes on a rowing machine or 15 minutes on an exercise bike. Increasingly, mental health professionals are suggesting what they call laughter therapy, which teaches people how to laugh at things that aren't usually funny and how to cope with difficult situations by using humor. So thanks for watching. This is the part where we usually ask a question at the end. Well, here's mine. What's your favorite joke? I love jokes, our whole crew loves jokes, and we'd love to hear yours. And uh, while you're online, befriend us on the internet, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. Uh, and you can hear more from us that way. You can also catch me along with my funny, fantastic co-hosts on BrainStuffShow.com.